Titanic. One. She flirted with you all night. Her smile was like a fishing net, her hands, hooks, her eyes, a two-seater canoe. But it is me who lies here next to you, here and now. Me who melts in the heat of your half-clothed body. Two. I do not know what love feels like, but lust is Ben Kenny's fourth album, stuck on repeat, and two bodies too weak to turn it to silence. Three. White boys with long hair who wear t-shirts two days in a row. <laughs> Black boys in tight jeans who smell of overpriced cologne. Asian boys with crew cuts grasping last generation iPhones. How many of them will be the ones to know the sign I make when I... Four. I'm not sure I know what love feels like, but lust is your arm across from me, our bodies fully clothed in a coil from somewhere deep inside an overfed snake, a fat cobra waiting to spring in the dark. Five, the first time we're challenged or confronted or whatever you want to call it is unexpected. A shock. A third party neither of us knows that well glanced for a too long moment. In hindsight, I could tell she was focused on the way your hand likes to hover behind the small of my back like an unsteady seesaw, back and forth, back and forth. In hindsight, her second look is obvious. In hindsight, I see the cogs turning in her head as clearly as she sees me, and then you, and then suddenly, uh, us. Her mouth opened, accent curled around her consonants, tongue flicking with a recognition of easy prey. Are you two shagging each other, she says. Six. You an asthma attack. You make my lungs tight, my chest contract, my back press against my breasts. My airwaves are a mess. Seven. I want to cut your legs off. Not so you can't walk away. More in the hope you'll stay exactly where I want to put you. Eight. You know this 21st century thing of not defining your romantic and or sexual relationships is a bit shit, isn't it? Nine. Are you two shagging each other, she says. Our replies were the epitome of the bad American romantic comedy I wish the two of us were starring in. We say nothing for a beat too long and then both speak at the same time and then both pause and then both sigh. I wish I could say I said nothing because I could feel you about to answer because I trusted you, but I was just scared I'd start to laugh, which wouldn't have helped. And it's funny, it's really funny that that was the one moment we both knew exactly how the other was feeling. We'd never been more in tune. I turned quiet and you quipped with a joke stuck on your tongue that she doesn't put out, but I've been trying, ha ha. So I replied with a very unconvincing, as if. <laughs> I had never said the words as if before because I am not a teenager in a bad American romantic comedy, but in that moment, as if is all I could say. She, the third party, raised her eyebrows, shrugged and said, Okay. 10. I start stealing your lighters to spite you. Perhaps if your cigarettes couldn't be lit, then your lungs would get clearer, your pores will unblock, and you'll turn to me and tell me how you feel. 11. At the station, a busker sings Britney Spears. Later on the train, I think of the busker, I think of the lyrics, and burst into tears. 12. My loneliness is killing me. <laughs> I must confess I still believe. 13. <laughs> when I'm not with you, I lose my mind. <laughs> it's true. 14. <laughs> Give me a sign. 15. I don't think we can ever fully love each other. It's a startling realization, one that picks at the tips of my fingers, pecking at me when you reach to hold my hand. There's a flock of birds between us now, this strange swarm of winged beasts beating their wings like broken time, so I start staying away from you. They're mostly pigeons, the birds, all gray and sad and dirty and fucking everywhere, but it's the others that alarm me the most. A swan called Jealousy, a crow named Anger. This pair of drifting swallows, boredom and indifference. Then there's the other bird. Her name's the other girl that you've just started seeing. 16. She arrived like a well-worn speed bump. In the way. 17. 
If I compare our doomed relationship to a ship that sinks in the middle of the Atlantic, will you finally start to get it? <laughs> well, maybe that's too straightforward. You've always said I've been a little bit difficult. Maybe I am the ship and you are the iceberg. And after crashing into you, I sank and was not found for a very long time. Or maybe we're the passengers, Jack and Rose. And Epic, I know I'll survive, but I'll still never forget you. Or maybe we're actual passengers drowning due to forces way beyond our control and only God could sink the ship we were on. Or maybe it's more abstract than that because this is a poem. Maybe it's more abstract than that because this is a poem and the ship is a 5,000 ton lump of our emotion balancing badly on a stormy sea. Maybe in this scenario, I am a struggling pattern that escapes and you are a life raft. Shaky but constant and good enough to save me and get me to shore before you collapse with the weight of me. Not because I'm that heavy, but because your support was never meant to last that long. Or maybe I am my own life raft and I can save myself. Maybe I am a captain who stays with a sinking ship and you are God who sinks it. Or I am God who lets this big fucking beast go. I don't know. I don't know. But somehow and some way, the Titanic reminds me of you. 18. It's like we're playing the okie Koki and our feelings in this massive circle on the floor and we're jumping in and out, in and out, in and out, and it's exhausting. In and out, in and out, in and out, like a shitty fuck. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, shake it all about. We do the okie koki and we turn around and we walk away from each other, we give up on this thing, whatever this thing is, and we don't even end things properly. We barely say goodbye, Leah, really, because that's what you've done when we both hurt you one another one too many times. That's what it's all about. <laughs> the okie koki. Oh, the okie koki. Oh, the okie koki. Knees bent, arms up, let's break up. <laughs> 19. My jealousy becomes a Michael Bay movie. Sloppier than Spielberg, larger than life, bright colours, bad cuts, tight clothes to catch your attention, a bad plot I can hardly follow, explosions when explosions aren't needed, a hollow but obvious ending, an unknown star that quickly fades away, and a sequel in the works before the first credit has even rolled. 20. There's something really ridiculous about this moment. Me watching you with her. You ignoring both her, me, and everyone else. Your friends watching me watch you with her, or maybe they're oblivious to me and just are watching you with her. I'm not sure which is worse. Her watching you, watching you, watching you. She's constantly watching you. She's desperate for your attention, and I hate how much I feel like I should hate her. But then I realize that I must be watching her watching you, which is infinitely more sad. Watching her, watching you, watching her, watching you, watching, watching, waiting, waiting, watching, waiting, commiserating. Say it ain't so, I will not go. <laughs> Turn the lights off, carry me home. Na 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 the day when the friend you rejected left, you curled up behind me immediately. Grip the dip of my waist like a life draft, my hips, a flotation device in your bed, your wrists motioned heavy against the current of my skin. It's okay, Leonardo. I know you promised to hold on, <laughs> but I know you have to let go. Thank you very much. <laughs>